Hey guys, it's Trevor, Sonic Truth Podcast, and I am here with Sky. Sky has been. S- I just met Sky yesterday. Yesterday or day before? It was yesterday. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Can you believe that? Yeah. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. Uh, but like, we're like best friends. Yeah. Absolutely. Like forever. BFFs. We're going to get like matching tattoos and stuff. You got any tattoos? None. Zero. No? I have the Spanish roll birthmark on my ass. So that's kind of a tattoo. That's true. It's a blue dot. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, I got tattoos. So, I mean, like we can pick one or if you want, we could just go. Well, no, we need, we need matching ones. <laughs> just need one that just says BFFs. So, but yeah, no, Sky, I met him here at uh, NAM, and what, uh, uh, Scott, tell us your story. I don't know if you want to hold the mic and tell us, or do you want me to hold it to your mouth? My I story. But, yeah. My story. Which which part of my story? Um, I grew up in, in the music and the entertainment industry. Uh, my father's a jazz composer. Uh, my mom was on Broadway and television. So by the time I was, I guess, six, I was SAG-AFTRA, and I sang on the Annie soundtrack, I sang on We Belong for Pat Benatar. I sang on I sang with Frank Sinatra when I was nine, um, and I grew up in a different kind of Hollywood. Um, and since then, I've continued to you know play instruments and and record. And I had a studio in my backyard. Uh, my dad would have the wrecking crew over to make commercials for you know everything. Um, and that's when I learned that the Beach Boys weren't really the Beach Boys because it was the cats that were in the backyard. Um, which included John Guerin, uh, Joe Percaro sometimes, Max Bennett, Dennis Budimir. Um, and so just being in that environment, growing up in it, um, I was super quiet. And so even when I wasn't working, I was pretty much the only kid in Hollywood allowed to be on set. So I was always on set. Um, I can't imagine you being quiet. I mean, I'm being quiet and like just like not talking. Because look, look, you're a social butterfly. Thank God. I, I didn't realize this about myself, to be honest. It, it, yeah, no, it's, it's, it comes out here because I'm meeting the people that make the gear and the instruments that I love. And so this is all love for me. You know, yeah, it's, it's the people you want to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I guess you're right. I like to make community anywhere I go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, so um, here we're going to go. All right. So how did you find out about Audioscape? That's a really good question that I've been trying to figure out. Um, Let's go down the wormhole. I, I somehow, I, I, okay, I always wanted an SSL bus compressor, like always, 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 always. And I somehow found yours and it, it saved my life because it was affordable, yet it was, it was uh, exactly what you want out of a bus compressor. So then the next thing I always wanted was an LA-2A. And um, ironically, I have a prototype that doesn't actually say Audioscape. It says Teletronics. Uh, so that's how really I, I adopted that. And, and lately, I've come to realize that I've been missing an EQPA my entire life. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you have definitely have been missing that. And, like, uh, I mean, like, everybody who has one is going to vouch for it. I mean, there's a, there's a reason we can't keep them in stock. Yeah. No, I, I suddenly realized that, oh, that whole adding and subtracting at the same time thing is what created my entire childhood sound. Oh, you know what I mean? Like from Magnum PI to like Grease to like anything I can think of, it sounds like that. And as a as a techno producer, you know, especially, you want your bass to hit really hard, but then sometimes it's too much and blah, blah. And so I never knew what that solution was yeah. until I figured it out. And ever since then, um, I've been trying to get one, you know, every Saturday, every Wednesday, I've been like, uh, uh, and you know, if you're having problems getting their products, so am I. Um, just so you know. Um, and so I, uh, I decided to come and stalk you here at the show. Well, that, that is, um, it, it's, it, it's not a stock if we welcome it though, right? You know, so I mean like, uh, uh, I don't know, like you've, you've just been like the best person that like, I could have like, I don't know. I didn't think there was people like you out here that I would meet and vibe with as much as I have. And uh, boy, I mean like the connections that you have the people that you know and just your friendly demeanor and just everything about you. Like, it's just been a breath of fresh air for me, for Chris, for Sean, like everybody here. It just like, Thank you, brother. I mean, for me, I'm following my passion and my love and I happen to have some good credits. I, I was with Prince for a decade um, and I've done a lot of work with Chad Hugo of the Neptunes and NERD. Um, and for me, it becomes 
bringing together all the people that I love. So like I'm friends with the director of the NAMM show and that became my intention was to bring you guys to him so that, you know, you guys can have a friendship that can help grow you as a company. And I just see it as like a, a win-win for everyone. Which that's something that uh, you did earlier for, today for us. And like, that was an amazing experience. And, and just be- Isn't Daniel Moylan amazing? Oh my God. He's, he's like, cool. Like I did like, you know, those people where you meet them and like, uh, you think in your head, like you're going to have like this nervousness or something like that. Yeah. He just completely calmed, like, oh, like, like and, immediately, yeah. like, treats you as an old friend. Yes. And just like, hey, let's just have a conversation. Yes. No, and he was like that from the minute I met him um, at the old Frankfurt show, Music Messe. Um, I was good friends with the director of Music Messe, Wolfgang Luca, uh, who was a big Prince fan and an amazing person. And so as I was doing my show over there, I, you know, I just met Daniel, and I actually didn't know who Daniel was when I first met him. I just thought he was a dude, you know what I mean? He was like, hey man, I loved your, you know, great show. And I was like, oh, thank you, da, da, da. And I'm like, you know, you're doing the trade show thing, look, looking at the badge and I'm like, oh, wow, you're the director of the NAMM show. Like that's, to me, like, I love these shows so much that I realized one day that I maybe 80% of all my dreams take place in this setting. You know what I mean? Like you have certain recurring scenarios. Um, this is mine, this is mine. And it's because of companies like yourself that are doing things the right way because you want to, because you want them for yourself. Yeah. Um, manufacturers who manufacture for themselves make wonderful things. Manufacturers who are making things for business, they have this pyramid that I've been shown. And at the bottom, 85% of the people who buy any one of these products will never make $1 for music. 10% will make a dollar, but not enough to actually live off of that. And only 5% are actually the ones who can make a living doing this. And they're not really catering to us because we're only 5%. Yeah. So that's the difference. You weren't catering to anyone in particular except for yourselves. Yeah, I mean, like, we that's, that's the whole thing. Like, you know, we sit there and we look at our wallets yeah. and we go, well, that's not thick. Yeah. So yeah. let's 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 make the same thing, let's, uh, quality, the thing that everybody wants, everybody strives after. But... Don't give the price tag on it that of those things. Yeah, no, well, I, I'm not going to name any other companies, but there are other people that are doing low price point reproductions of things, but it doesn't have the magic. And, you know, if it doesn't have the magic, what's the point? Do they even care? That's, I don't think they care. I think they're looking at that pyramid I talked about. Yeah. I mean, we, we might edit some of this out, yeah, but, you know, but, so any, anything off the record, you know. Oh, all right. So, all right. You got to mess around with the new stuff, right? Yeah. What's your, what, what's your thoughts about that two, uh, 260 VU? Oh my gosh. It's exactly what I've been wanting. And ironically, I actually emailed you guys about a month ago and I said, would you please just make the 160 VU and then we can be done with it? Yeah, I, sh I shut that shit down real quick because yeah. I didn't need to let anybody know. Yeah, no, you didn't say anything back. Um, so when I showed up at the show and there it was, I mean, I knew it wasn't because of me. Well, you know, spiritually, maybe. Um. No, we, 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 well, it's funny because within the last month, that's when I started getting messages about uh, doing like the, the, like a VU. And uh, it's like, I, 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 I had to look around and just be like, did, did, did somebody let this out of the bag and without us knowing? You know the hundred monkey theory, right? No, what is that? So apparently on an island off of Japan, there were scientists researching monkeys for a completely other reason. But they discovered that there was one little family of monkeys that had learned to knock this, what was it, some fruit off a tree. It would land in the sand and they'd eat it and it was sandy. One particular family started washing them in the water because it happened to land in the water. And they taught each other. And as soon as a certain number of these monkeys all knew it, monkeys on other islands started doing it. So the theory is once enough of us are aware of something, we're all aware of it. Okay, so, all right. See? Yeah, that, all right, that's mind-blowing, so. The 100th but, monkey theory. All right, so all right, now we're gonna just get off of uh, audio really okay. quick, you know? Okay. Um, we're gonna go off the beaten path. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what is your favorite conspiracy theory that you're kind of like, I get that, I like, because I'm an easy sell. 
with yeah. conspiracy theories. So what do you think is kind of like an easy sell for you? And like, you're like, maybe I shouldn't be believing in this, but I low key do and I kind of fuck with this. Okay, so there's ones that I know absolutely to be true, so we won't speak of those. The ones that are fringy that that, that I can fuck with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, also, yeah, you can swear all you want. Here, so. um, COVID. And these COVID? And these vaccines that don't work. And them shutting the world down over the flu um, has accomplished a lot for them. Just as legalizing drugs gets rid of independent money in the mafia, they're kind of squashing everybody. You know, I mean, even this show here is at 40% of what it normally would be because people are scared. Um, they, they've really bought the whole thing. And um, so I love being here as an act of rebellion against that. But yeah, no, I will never be jabbed, ever. So, I mean, I got jabbed because like, you know, I, I mean, like, I just, just, just- Chris didn't make you, right? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Nobody made me. Okay, good. I, I think it was just a whole. Uh, but are you gonna get six boosters, dude? If there's a commercial in 15, 20 years being like, "Did you get the COVID nineteen vaccine?" You might be entitled to some money. I might be rich a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I did it. I did it for financial gain in the future. I'm looking out for my kids' future oh in retirement. You know. Okay. So that's why I did it. So you're uh, the slaughtered lamb for the rest of the fam. Well, also, I've been like, I've been like fucked up on drugs and like have taken pills off the ground at like nightclubs. So, I mean, like, yeah, but at, at least we know that those are pills. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know what this DNA stuff is. Just, yeah, oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. I'm right there with you, man. Yeah, I, no, I, I know a lot of people would say that, like, oh, you do this line of coke, but you want blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's a little different. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, no, it is a little different for sure. Yeah, no, actually, uh, Although it's not anymore with the fentanyl thing. That's really scary. Oh, fentanyl, dude, that thing is, that, that's so bad in Florida. Fentanyl is absolutely oh, insane. It's how we lost Prince. Yeah, it's yeah. how we lost Tom Petty. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, Horrible. yeah. I don't know. So, all right, so let's go off the beaten path even a little bit more. So, like, so we go down, down that conspiracy theories. All right, opinion on Sasquatch. Or, sorry, skunk ape. I'm sorry, what? Skunk ape. Oh, because he smells? Yeah, and he's like okay. apey. Okay. Um, I mean, that's what we just call him in Florida. I mean, like people call him Bigfoot, people call him Sasquatch. Skunk oh, okay, ape. Okay, I'll put it this way. I don't think there are any legends out there without a kernel of truth. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah. So, yeah, there has to be something, right? Yeah. Will I ever see it? Like, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen some weird shit. Wouldn't that be some, so what's some, so what's some weird shit you've seen? I saw a UFO land. Whoa. All right. So I was about to go over to UFOs and stuff. Okay. So this is all right up my alley. Okay. So, all right. They're here. Oh, 100%. I was in Colorado, going from Colorado Springs back to Denver, whatever that freeway is. Um, my friend was driving. It was nighttime. And I noticed that these two stars were kind of like moving, but they were weird flashy stars, like the ones that flash red, white, and blue. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. And I was judging them based on two other stars that weren't moving, right? Until all of a sudden they moved. One of them went like this and we and 10 other cars pulled over on the side of the freeway because we were like, what the fuck? And as it came larger, I could see that it was a sphere and that the lights were like around it, red, white, blue, red turning into white, turning into blue in the same space. Um, and it landed about two miles away from the freeway, just to the right of it. Um, and the really odd thing was, none of the 10 cars, none of us spoke to each other. We all just got back in the car and drove away. So nobody conversed like, nobody what, conversed, the, like, what the, like, like what the fuck we, we just see? No, and it must, I mean, mind control beam? I don't know, because we had been driving across the country with the intention of finding the UFOs in Dulce, New Mexico. That's where we thought we'd see it, yeah. right? We got all the way to Colorado, we see it, and at the time, my friend Jack was driving, and I was like, Jack, let's drive, I, we know where it landed, let's, you know, let's go, let's go. And he was like, no, it's just a helicopter. No, it was just a helicopter. So, Jack's a pussy, man. Yeah, he's a fucking pussy. Yeah. 
You could have had first contact. You know, in retrospect, it's really good that we didn't do that. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't want your, uh, you don't, you don't want your uh, life becoming like, you know, the uh, fire in the sky. Yeah, I don't want Skinwalker Ranch Part Two. Yeah, we don't need that. You don't need that. But I'll just point out to any viewer that thinks that's bullshit. Um, our government admits it now. Oh yeah, and did you see who's responsible for that coming to light? Tom DeLonge, is that who you're? Tom DeLonge. Yeah, Tom DeLonge. Pro, the guy that says dick jokes on stage and Blink-182, like, and everybody thought he was full of shit, and then like now it's out there that he's not full of shit. And he, like, exactly the reason why he left Blink again, yeah, like because he's like he he left Blink. There's a I've, I've kind of heard some rumors and some confirmation that he's like back, but. I can't. I can't really. I can't really uh, elaborate on that. Um, this probably has to get cut out. But um, actually, you know, he doesn't watch this shit. Who cares? So, uh, you know. But uh, yeah. So, but I mean, like, the reason why he had to step away was because he had to go do this stuff with because he has contracts with the government, and he had to go and do that. And, and know, he couldn't tell his bandmates why he was leaving, so they were just like this fucking asshole again. So and what's weird is that. There's a lot of history of that. If you think of Skunk Baxter, yeah. and he's a, you know, like, like he works for what, probably the CIA, like, you know what I mean? Um, okay, here's a conspiracy theory. Are you ready for this one? Yep. There's a book, actually, that I'm, that I'm pulling this one from, and it's really good. Um, something about weird scenes in the canyon. It's about Laurel Canyon and the 60s and what was happening there. Um, but the bottom line is Jim Morrison's dad was the captain of the ship that started the Vietnam War. David Crosby's dad is also military. Um, there's a whole list of all these people that are military that suddenly became these hippie stars. But my point is, who made them stars? Well, it was kind of Pamela DeBar and the other groupies who would show up and make you a success. Ooh, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway. I mean... Uh, so, Th that that is juicy. Yeah, and you know, um, I saw it happen in the rave scene. I saw the CIA replace our mushroom LSD sexual equality experiment and turn it into ecstasy and watch the strippers. I mean, I've never been on ecstasy in a strip club. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you go to a rave party. What are these chicks wearing? Oh, like nothing. They started that. They, 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 and it was strippers after hours that would suddenly show up at our parties at like three in the morning and they would get up on stage and I realized, oh my God, these are CIA chicks. They wanted to change our scene. Holy shit. So Demon. we went from an underground, instrumental, abstract, creative scene to basically top 40. I mean, listen to EDM, it's horrible. I, you know, you said it, not me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know our audience. Yeah. So, uh, no. <laughs> well, well, shit, I like that. And, and, and actually, it. that's the only reason I ever DJed for Prince. Um, is there? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there. Totally. There's there's a dude named Pasqual, and I'm sure he's CIA, and he stole the name Electric Daisy Carnival from my friend Kool Aid, who had thrown it for a few years. I was part of the lawsuit for that. Like, I, I had an eight hour deposition with Live Nation about this shit. Um, Fuck Live Nation. <laughs> he was the first person to charge $5 for water. He was the first person to, like, demand DJs have an exclusive in Los Angeles. And if DJs have an exclusive, you can't have a scene. He was using these mafia tactics. And, you know, so I know in my little corner over here, I was like, you know what? I'm never going to play for this man. My life in LA is not happening. Who do I want to connect with? Because I had done a project for Disney where I remixed classic Disney songs in rave styles. Uh, it's called uh, Mickey's House. I had actually called it Mouse House, but they called it Mickey's House. No. Now I don't even remember which is which. It's either Mickey's House or Mouse House. And my idea was the opposite. But anyway. Um, and so I decided, okay, connecting with a larger entity like Disney, was something I could use. Um, that's how I started playing in the rave scene. And under my name, it would say Disney, whereas other people would have like party crews or whatever. Yeah. And, so I, and so I realized association is cool. Who do I want to be associated with? And that, that's when I cold called Prince. But it would have never happened if the rave scene hadn't gotten turned into shit. 
Wow. Yeah. I mean, dude, that's like a hell of a story for that. That's like, that's insane. Yep. So, all right. Uh, what about ghosts? You ever see a ghost? Absolutely. I grew up in a haunted house. Oh, so uh, my house is haunted. Okay. Yeah. I, I, like, uh, I was talking to my fiance and we we're, uh, I've actually just told this. Uh, I was talking to my fiance and uh, I said something to her and then uh, she was talking to me and then I stopped because I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked down the hallway and there's just something peeking out from like behind the doorway looking. And it was probably almost like a child height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all white, like couldn't yeah. see through it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I went, oh, I went, hello. And then it just like slowly dipped back. <laughs> and I was just Isn't like- is it creepy oh. when they shrink from you? That's oh. Like, oh. Oh, there's also a man in the house. Like yeah. there's like a, like a, a spirit of a man. And there's also a-, a there's uh, well, well, an apparition. I can't say it's a spirit. Who knows if it's uh, our dimension crossing with another and all that good stuff? Because there's that, that possibility. Um, I also have a theory about life that, like, because like I have a vivid memory of a past life, yeah. and um, my dad does too, which is kind of weird. Um, but uh, which is weird because all time is simultaneous, right? Yeah, but 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 yeah. but like both Vikings. Oh, cool. Yeah, so like Viking times, uh, and, and and I had like. a I have a vivid memory. Nice. So I have a theory that you have you go through life multiple times. So maybe the first time you live to be 92, second time you live to be 78, second time or the third time you live to be 60. Like and then it just works its ways it works its all the way down until you're eventually miscarried and that is your circle of life. Wow, that's a really good anti-abortion stance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just think, well, well all these, uh, you know, <laughs> these anti-abortion <laughs> stands. <laughs> or until you're eventually aborted. Uh, you know, until you're just eventually not wanted. So, <laughs> so no, 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 no. Women, uh, pro, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-choice. So, you know, I'm like, uh, all these pro-lifers out here, they're all pro-choice until the kid, like, needs fucking food. So, you know, yeah. I'm glad I convinced my ex-wife not to kill it. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I mean... That's real. Yeah. That's uh, real. No, that's good. Um, but in terms of ghost stories and growing up in my house, one of the weirdest things that I remember... Um, you know he's in the frame, right? Oh. Hey. You're in the shot. You're in the shot. We're filming. <laughs> You're fine. Um... Well, well, there, there you go. There you go. That's the attitude we're looking for. Um, when I would, when I was like maybe one and a half, I was like not talking, and I don't, I don't remember how old I was when I talked. And it's been so long. When do children start talking? I don't remember. Um, my, my like my son when he was like one and stuff. Like it was like. Little words like mom and yeah. dad, dad yeah. and stuff okay. like that. So now, maybe I was one. Maybe I was one. I'm standing in my crib in my room, and my parents would call this calling and crying. So I thought of it as that, but I couldn't say the words. So that's how I know I was a certain age. But I was like, Wah! you know what I mean? Like, well, like it was the middle of the night. I was yeah. scared by something, and I wanted their presence. I wanted to be comforted by them. Um, we had adjoining rooms with a closet in between with like two doors. And as I'm like, wah, I look over and the door is opening, but the door that's opening is like black and white. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that, yeah. that look. Yeah. And then through it comes my dad carrying me in black and white, greenish, but black and white. And I'm looking at myself like, and, and the me that I'm looking at is looking at me like, and he comes all the way over and is like putting me in the crib when the real door opens, that all disappears. My dad comes in, takes me into the bedroom. I fell asleep. He thought I was asleep, picks me up, takes me back into my room. And I'm like looking at myself in the crib, staring at me like, what the fuck? So I've been through weird time tunnels. Yeah. And it taught me that you can do that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, either, either, like, I mean, I mean, I've expanded my brain. Yes. If you know what I mean. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. like I, I'm all about. All right. Like, all right, and this leads this that. this leads to the next story. I'm like 19, on acid, at a rave party, um, with my girlfriend, and it's been a wonderful night. 
And since we're on acid, we're sort of experimenting with our minds because I realized like when I said to myself, you know, I'm hung, I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty, I want some water. It seemed like the whole crowd went towards the water. And I was like, oh shit, I better not think too loud. Yeah. Otherwise I'm gonna be like hurting everyone everywhere. Yeah. And so I, I was trying to like calm myself or whatever. And so, so we were doing that and we were walking around and you know, listening to music as you do. And then all of a sudden it was like instantly, it wasn't instant, but it seemed like it to us. It was like five in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. We go outside, the sun's coming up. There, you, there had been projections outside. It's not, it, they're gone. And here's the weird thing. I turned to her and I was like, first of all, I didn't want to be driving. You know what I mean? And well, I was like- You don't want to drive on psychedelics regardless. Exactly. And so this had crept up on us, like that it was like time to go. Everyone's like hurting out. The security's like hurting people out. The music's over. And I turned to her and I was like, oh my God, it's over. And then like fucking Mickey Mouse, I went, no. It's not over. And boom, it was two o'clock. It was two o'clock. Everyone was back. All the lights were back on. And the rest of the night, we could predict the music and we were trying to find ourselves. And thank God we didn't. Yeah, I mean, I don't, would, would you even be sitting right here if you found yourself? Exactly not. I would not. I no. would have canceled myself out. Yeah, yeah. See, I know exactly. it. I know it. I know it, I know it too. I know it too. So yeah. No. So yeah, I, 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 see, I've, I've done some, like, I've been, I've been there with the LSD and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I went, I went for a walk on LSD uh, one time. And uh, uh, a truck drove by me, like a big-ass truck, like, has a lift on it. You know, like, like, like small dick syndrome okay. uh, type of, yeah, uh, type, of type of, type of, type of truck. Like, probably has truck nuts on it, everything. So... <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, you've seen those, right? Oh, it's so distracting when you're driving and it's like, what the fuck? Uh, I was just like, am I getting teabagged here? What the hell's going on here? So, but uh, and I like drove by, but it made like a loud noise. And what I saw was a dragon. So, and then I saw, um, uh, my, my fiance called me and she was like, where are you? And I was just like, I'm on a walk right now. And, she, and I was on uh, on acid. And she was like, so what are you doing walking on acid? And I was like, just going for a walk, whatever. And then I and I just started going, where the fuck did he go? Where did he go? And she's like, oh, I was like, the gnome. She's like, what? And I was like, there was a gnome following me. I was talking to him. And then, and then like, she's talking. And then I sit there and I go, oh, there he is. And he gets into a small carriage <laughs> being taken away by a little horse and wow it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen so and then uh, 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 but also going back to like what you were talking about with like your crib and everything yeah so get this story I woke up in the middle of the night one time to the feeling of this like a bony finger whatever and I opened my eyes and it, my room wasn't big at, the, at all at the time like uh, it was in my uh, old house and I had one of those doors that like where you hit it and it split in two and slid over. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. That was that was my bedroom door. So I don't know. Like I guess my parents didn't want to be smoking pot or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. you know, guess what? It's legal here, baby. All right. Uh but uh, and that we uh, care about legality. Oh yeah, and, and, and my <laughs> my parents hit me up for weed now, so I was just like well, so. But uh so that's how it is. But uh you know, so I wake up to that and there's this figure standing in the doorway. Tall, lanky, and I, I'm like half asleep, and I'm like, "Mom, no, Dad, no." I go through everybody in my house, and it says no to everything, and I, and, and I, oh, yeah, it said no to everything, and I went, oh, "Okay," and I lay back down, and went, and I verbally just went, "Wait, you said no to everything," and immediately my door slams shut, and I, it's like it's almost like it's like out of a movie. I get up. I open the door. I see a shadow go across the floor from like the, the nightlight that's in yeah. there. And I go into the living room and I hit the lights immediately because that's where it went. Nothing there. I go around room to room, op uh, hitting everything. And like every light going, it's in here, it's in here, waking up everybody. And nobody knows what the hell I'm talking about. Didn't find anything. Wow. But I also know it wasn't a hallucination or a dream. I was sober as a bird. And also I never went back to sleep. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. All right, I have one scary ghost story like that too. Give me, give me so, give me. you know, 
I lived in my house my whole life, to be honest. Up until eight, nine years ago, I was in the same house my entire life. Um, and at this point, I think I was like 24. But I guess what I'm getting at is that I had learned how to calm the energy because ghosts are almost like wild animals. And if you get too like carried out, like the movie Carrie, they'll fucking respond. And I'd learned that. And so like there was a thing that they would do to let me know to get out of the living room. They'd be like, these little clicks and I'd just be like, okay, I'm going. And you know what I mean? And so I was always very, very uh, conscious of what was happening in the house. Um, I had a girlfriend over and she was a bit carryish, and she had this, this psychicness and she was hot, but she was a little bit like, whatever. Her name is Vicky. And, uh, shout out to Vicky. Woo, Vicky. Um, and all of a sudden she turns to me, we're, we're in a sexual type situation. She turns to me and she goes, oh my God, do you hear that? And I was like, no, what? Just, you don't hear that? And all of a sudden I do, I hear this like, like like a super high pitched thing and it's getting louder. And she's like, what the fuck? It's getting louder. And I was like, Vicky, stop it. She's like, what the fuck? It's getting louder. No, no, no. It's freaking me out. She's like putting on her clothes. And like, next thing I know, she's running out of my house. It's a two story house. She has to like run all the way down the hallway, all the way down my stairs, all the way down, you know, to, to the, uh, is a big house out the front door and I'm running out after her going, what the fuck? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Right. We get to her car and she had all these beads around her mirror and they all went all over. And I'm like, Vicky, you fucking stop it. Like, this is you. You know what I mean? Like, I have to live here. Like, like, don't do this shit. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going home. Blah, 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 blah. I, you know, and I got out of her car, walked back to my front door, opened the door. And as I opened the door, a hot, huge hand grabbed all of me, like, why did you run from me? And I was so scared I couldn't go back in my house. Fuck. That, no. That happened until the next morning. And I, I, like, creeped back in, like, are we cool? Like, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. That is, that You're is, really that is bad bad me. You know, I don't talk about this stuff. Well, well it's, no, I don't think anybody's asking you about this stuff. <laughs> so, you know? Who, who the hell asks people's questions like this? You know? Only, only someone I'm, intelligent. All right. So we're going to just finish it off with a lightning round really quick. And if you want to do this again tomorrow, we can too. So, yeah. you know. Uh, so, all right. One has to go and never existed before in there at all. All right? Okay. Bands. I'm sorry, what? We're, we're talking about bands. So uh, one has to go and, like, could never have existed. All right? Okay. So here it goes. Here's your choices. The Beatles or Led Zeppelin? Oh, that's really interesting. The Beatles. All right, fair. Uh, that's that's mine too. So, <laughs> all right, um, all right. Um, if uh, if a, if a if one song had to play, wait. But I'm going to qualify that because the Beatles didn't actually write that music. Billy Preston intimated to me those were his chords and the Tavistock Institute's propaganda lyrics. So, was that a band? Industry plant? I don't know. Uh, it was a fucking band. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. And then, all right. So, all right. Um, all right. Uh, only one song can play. Every uh, it's uh, every single time you uh, enter a room, a song starts to play. And, like, it, you, you cannot change it after you pick it. Okay. So, it's for the rest of your life. Woo. And it can play the whole way through for everybody. Okay. I'm ready. What song is it? I Feel Love by Donna Summer. Good fucking answer. My God. <laughs> oh. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate is what came out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you a uh, 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 beer or liquor? Liquor. Uh, wine or coffee? Ooh. Wine. All right. <laughs> um, Audioscape or another company? Dude, Audioscape is another... There are very few companies that I say saved my life. One of them is the Sonoma System, where I record DSD. One of them is the Equitech, which- Which, which I met them. Yeah, dude, I met them. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. That, oh, that was all- That was me meeting them. Oh shit, okay. Yeah, that's how we I thought, I thought you brought him over here. Isn't that cool? Well, I did, I did, I met him, and then I brought him over here. Well, 
Anyway, awesome. and the third one is is your company because honestly, I have needed more quality gear. I mean, I grew up with the very best gear. I have a board built hand built by Bill Putnam. Um, I have original 1176s, two of them, one blue, one black. Um, I had, you know, I had almost everything I could want, but I always wanted an LA2A. I always wanted an SSL bus compressor. I now need an EQPA. Uh, I asked if you would please make a 160 VU and you've already, I mean, so what I'm saying is like, how many companies can I name that are literally just like going down the list and making everything I want? Except you and maybe Behringer. I mean, I mean, I mean, the goal is to fill your studio and not take a hit on the bank. You know, and that's that's so lovely. Well, how are you going to afford your studio if you're put, dumping all the money into gear? Yeah, but I mean, no one thinks about it like that. It, apparently, we do. Yeah, and no, and I'll be honest. Back in the day, Ivana Manley was very kind to me. What was it? Um, any plugs you want to do? Um, Where can people find you? Sky13.com, SKY13.com. Um, I'm scoring films. I'm making music. I'm, um, you know, I'm doing 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 it all, living the dream. Um, but really, what I want to plug is you guys because um, you're doing it right. You're not cutting corners, um, and it stands up to all of my vintage gear. And that's where. I mean, that's, that's just, that's, that's just how it is. I don't know. I don't know what else to say to it, you know? So, well, I hope to see you more tomorrow Yeah. and let's just have a good time. Nam has been a blast for me. How has Nam been for you? This has been the best show. And it's, it's hard to say that because I love these shows, but with a limited amount of people and the people that there are, I mean, I just met Chris Lord Algae and I'm going to hang out with him. I, you know, I, I think the thinner crowd is kind of a blessing because it's the it's the it's the people that really want to be here. It's the people that really want to come out and support the guys and stuff like that. We know some of the bigger names aren't here this year and all that stuff, but that's fine. They'll be back next year. Yeah. I have a feeling. Yeah. So yeah, no, and and um, once again, I want to thank Daniel Moylan for this entire thing because he's really been pushing for everyone being able to come together in person and meeting, and he realizes the importance of that. And I feel like the powers that be, back to our conspiracy theory, are trying to kill that. Yeah, I agree. But hey, I'm glad I'm not locked up inside anymore. I'm yeah. glad you're not locked up inside anymore. I'm glad that we're able to do this. Yeah, man. So, yeah. you know, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't, know, I don't even know if I would have ever discovered no, no, no. Audio Escape myself. A lot of things have been a blessing in disguise, but that's only because we used it that way. Well, yeah, man. You got to manifest everything in your life, you know? Yeah. Everybody's got a vision board somewhere. It might be in your head, but or in your heart. Yep. You know? So, but Sky, thank you so much for being on the Sonic True yeah, Podcast. Thank you, thank you for uh, Audio Escape and just... Uh, and shooting the shit and just getting a little deeper. Yeah. And uh I feel like you and I are gonna be lifelong friends now. So Amen. yeah, I'm gonna I you have my number. I need to get your number. Yeah, no, so no, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just just yeah, like uh because if you ever are up late one night and you're just like, you know what, I wanna talk about some conspiracy fear shit. I wanna talk about aliens. Like late here is gonna be like six in the morning over there. You know, you think I give a fuck. Nice. Dude, I'm up late all I have insomnia. Ooh. So, yeah, okay. but we're getting off topic. That was, uh, you know, but yeah, I'm Trevor and this is Sky. So I'm sure Sky. Check him out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. Peace.